It's space time, bitches. It's Brittany, bitch. Hello, this is Brittany, and welcome back to my channel. Hello from planet Earth. We're here to talk about books today. If you can tell from my thumbnail, this is a sci-fi reading vlog. I know this isn't necessarily sci-fi, whatever. It's what a lot of people interpret it to be. It was just kind of fun, and I decided to do it. Because you know what? I need to start thinking about my thumbnails, okay? It's important. You gotta do something fun. If you all didn't know, I fucking love sci-fi. I think it's probably my favorite genre of like all time if I had to choose a genre to read for the rest of my life and never choose another one. I'm pretty sure I would just choose sci-fi. I can't help myself. I love weird, wacky shit. If you have a good plot and some character development in there, even better. So I'm gonna be reading a couple of different books this week. Uh, I have one on audiobook and then there are, I think, one or two I'm gonna pick up from the library later this week, whenever our, my library finally opens for people to come back in and actually like browse um, because I still can't request books. Like I cannot request new library books. All the library books I'm getting are the ones that I have already requested before the quarantine shut off and they won't allow us to request anymore. <laughs> I do for sure have three we're gonna be reading. Uh, one of them is Space Opera, which is my audiobook that I almost DNF'd. <laughs> Uh, the second is This Is How You Lose the Time War, and the third is Red Rising. So those are for sure my three I will be reading. The other ones I'm hoping I can get to at my library. I'm not 100% sure because they could also be gone off the shelves the next couple of days before I get to get there. Um, I doubt it, but you never know. So let's talk first about space opera. Um, I'm actually 90% of the way into this. I started this two days ago, but I actually wasn't sure if I was going to include this um, because I almost DNF'd this and I think partially it's because the reader of the audiobook is very, 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 very British and he has a very strong British accent and there are some British accents that are easier to understand and he has one of them that is not as easy to understand. I had to slow it down to reading like talking level like usually I can read an audiobook on at least 1.25 to 1.5 depending on the, the narrator and I feel like 1.25 is like my perfect speed it's like my level of speaking and my quickness uh, but I had to read it on one for over half the book till I could kind of understand what was happening because I was so confused because I feel like her writing style is just so absurdist fiction and I do love absurdist fiction like uh, Christopher Moore is one of my favorite authors and he writes a lot of absurdist fiction but maybe it's because I haven't read that kind of fiction in a long time that I'm having a harder time with like the humor genre of sci-fi it's it's kind of been a struggle uh, a lot of her words she uses like so many adverbs and you know where like they over explain something and it's funny it's really hard to get through at some parts and some parts are really fucking hilarious like some of the things that the talking animals in the story do are hilarious the things that they say and they do are just they're really funny uh but the premise of this is basically it's an opera in space you have to sing in space the aliens these aliens basically it's a talking flamingo i believe it's a type of alien they come to earth and they talk to all seven billion people at once and they say hey you need to send us like your best people to sing because you need to compete in the space opera and if you lose the opera or you don't get in a certain placement uh we're gonna obliterate your planet so interesting premise and basically they take like this old rock star and they put him up in space and he has to compete and i'm 90 percent of the way through it and i've definitely enjoyed it more the last 50 percent it has been a lot better because the beginning was also just setting it up and I just didn't understand the way that the story was set up and like how she works with her characters because she'll literally introduce you to a character and talk about them for like literally 10 minutes about that one character and like their planet and how they work and like well they think this on this day and you know blah 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 back when this happened 20 years ago this person did this and now they cannot do this blah 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 and it's just it goes into like this crazy weird backstory of like absurdism and a lot of the lines are really funny and quippy and I do enjoy that especially because it obviously is kind of like a humor genre as well it's kind of like a sci-fi humor novel uh it's it's kind of meant to be funny and absurd and weird but it's also really hard to get into because I think it's just the audiobook version for me is easier in some ways because he does a really funny accent for some characters that make them really stick out to me 
and other times when he's just like reading normal dialogue I have a really hard time connecting with his accent um like when he does the talking flamingo he's like oh sugar yes and it's so funny and it makes perfect sense for like the character and it just it just works but when he's talking normally and he's talking like this and everything's like this and the absurdity and the glaciers and it's so intense i had to slow it down because every word was just so hard to understand and i thought i was really good at understanding british people because of how much fucking one direction i supported my entire life but i guess not so i'm really glad i didn't dnf this but i <laughs> I mean, because I'm already, I only have like, I have less than an hour left. I'm just going to try and fucking floor it. It's, it's okay. It's been good. I feel like some parts of it were really funny and I loved and like, I like connected with these weird talking animals basically. And then other parts of it just droned on and were so confusing, like the over explanation. But I can't tell if it's just because I don't really like the audiobook formation and low key, like I'm tempted to kind of pick this up on paper and read this in its published format and see if I connect better and now that I understand kind of more what's happening I can I kind of want to reread it in that sense so I think whenever my library kind of opens back up I might try rereading it um I just don't know if I'm going to give it like a rating yet I think I'll say I finished it but I just I just don't know I don't know how I feel about this I don't even know if I can give it a rating like it's just so absurd and weird and I'm just having such a hard time connecting with certain things I just don't know how I feel about it I do enjoy some of the great dialogue like it's really funny like the one point um like one of this alien species shows up looking like clippy like the clip art from like the word documents and they're like well i thought this was a format you humans would enjoy like do you need help and he's like no i don't need fucking help and it's funny like there's some really good situations in here but the rest of it like for example, like I don't care about our main character at all. Like he's so irrelevant to like the world of like the aliens and shit. And I just don't care about him. Like this honestly is like a two or three star. Like it's totally okay, but I just, <sighs> Lord knows I'm trying. I don't know. So I have about an hour left and then I'll probably update you tomorrow. Cause I don't think I'm going to finish it today. Cause obviously after work, I'm not going to listen to an audiobook. I'm going to read one of my physical books. The other book that I'll be reading is This Is How You Lose a Time War. I'm exactly 50 pages into this. And this is the weirdest fucking book I think I've like literally ever read. It is, both of these science fiction books I read this week are both just like fucking nuts. Like I just don't understand them at all. Space Opera was just like a weird, cra it's a, cra I don't understand. It's cray 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 cray. This is like confusing, dense, like, like shit. Like, I just don't understand. I want to understand. Ugh. Okay, so synopsis. This book is basically about two women who are separate agents in a time war. What they're fighting for right now, I, do, I don't know. I don't understand. I have no fucking clue. But it basically starts out with like red and blue. So they're both women and apparently they're supposed to fall in love through these love letters. They basically leave each other. And they're not like love letters yet. But they're just letters they like leave each other like they're fighting on two sides of the different war like one of them is like more of like a robot and the other one is like from the green side and like they grow into beings it's so weird i don't understand it at all but it's very fascinating and i just like keep reading to try to understand what's going on because i'm just so fucking lost but it's so intriguing like at one point i think it was red she literally goes and like takes these guys bones and offers them up to like a god because they're like trying to train they're trying to change like time strands and then they have to like rebraid them and connect time strands for things to work out but i don't know what they're fighting for like in this time war like i don't understand like if they're trying to make sure time goes smoothly and they're i, I don't understand they're almost like their own gods too like she like one of them i think it was red again she was like stopping Atlantis from happening I, I don't know I just I can't even understand what's happening right now I, I literally don't know I feel psychotic just like reading this book like I I'm trying so hard to explain this to you I I don't even know I'm like getting upset about it also all the words in this are just like like the it's so choppy and dense and like very pretentious writing honestly it's like it's pretentious like that's the best way to describe it it's like the fancy writing she reaches what was once a letter kneeling she stirs the ashes a spark flies up and she catches it in her hand 
She removes a thin white slab from a pouch at her side and slips it under the ashes, spreads the thin against the white, removes her glove, and slits her finger. Rainbow blood wells and falls and splatters into gray. She works her blood into the ash to make it a dough, kneads that dough, rolls it flat. All around, decay proceeds. The battleships become mounds of moss. Great guns break. She applies jeweled lights and odd sounds. She wrinkles time. The world cracks through the middle. Like, what the fuck? Literally, dude, I have no idea what's going on in this book, and it's so fucking weird. I can't say I'm not enjoying it, but I'm just having such a hard time crafting what's happening because every part of this fucking book is so elusive. Like, every part feels like an exclusive club that I need to get into, and each one is a different club. Like, each chapter and each letter because the end of each chapter there's a letter from one to the other and then it jumps to each perspective and each one of them feels like their own special airline club that i'm not invited to i because there's so many rules like i just don't understand like how do they work like i'm kind of getting more of it like red doesn't need to eat but she does eat because she enjoys it i, I mean i just don't understand like what are they fighting for who are these people are they even human I do know blue is a, a woman of color because they described her dark skin. So I like that. That's nice that we have different kinds of characters and she's like the one that's kind of like the garden version. I don't know. It's so fucking weird. I'm just, I'm so lost in this in the best way. Like I just don't understand like why they're like, why they're like burning villages and letting bad things happen. I just feel like they're weird catalysts for something. I just don't understand if like they're like, like gods or something. I just don't know. This is less than 200 pages and I'm already a fourth of the way through technically, but like, I'm just so confused. I'm trying to actually take it slow when I read because I'm trying to understand what's happening. I'm really trying. So good luck with this one. I'll keep you updated on that. And Red Rising, I'll probably get to later this week and then the other one. So. As soon as I have more of an update on this bad boy, I'll let you know when I figure it out. Hi guys, it's update time. So I actually finished Space Opera today and you know what? I'm having such a hard time describing it. So I'm just gonna read you my Goodreads review because I felt like when I, writ I wrote it out, I like made more sense of the story to me. So I'm just gonna read it out. And since I record on my phone, I'm gonna look at my work computer. I pulled it up really quick just so I can read this to you. <laughs> I wrote, I love esoteric alien sex and talking cats who want to enslave planets as much as the next person, but the plot in this novel really fell flat for me. This novel is a perfect book for the sake of laughing and reading utter ridiculousness. I think I'm giving this a three star just for the pure enjoyment of some of the characters and the hilarious antics that ensue. When Valente focused on the characters and their actions relevant to the current dialogue, the story worked. Space opera really had me going in some moments and there were some humorous quips. The rest of the novel is dot 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 slight. And the absurd humor and tangents made this difficult to listen to. That part was underlined. Also, the audiobook is narrated by a heavily British individual. Some of his accents of other characters were freaking gold, but his normal talking voice is thick and heavy to listen to such abstract concepts. When, especially when the digressions of this book were distracting. I actually almost DNF this, but I'm glad to have finished it. I'm looking forward to rereading this in the future via physical book to see if this is better via my eyeballs rather than my very American ears. So that's the best way I can think of to describe this book. It is very weird. It is very niche. I feel like this is such a niche book. I think that's why there are so many good five star reviews is those people really enjoyed this kind of stuff. And I do too. I think I just haven't read anything like this in a long time, but also like I love humor and niche shit, but I feel like the plot was just so garbage in this. And it's such a shame because I would have liked a better story. Like this has so much potential to be like really, really good. Like I love the concepts and I love some of the characters in this. Like basically one of them brings their cat along for, I don't know, for some fucking reason. And um, the cat is given the ability to speak and the cat's like the best fucking part. It's hilarious and it's just so funny. And then one of the species that comes down to basically tell everyone on earth that they need to participate in the space opera is like an ultramarine flamingo bird. And his accent for the flamingo bird was super funny and it was great to listen to because uh, I think this is she, she's very sarcastic and it's just, it's hilarious. 
and you know I just really enjoyed some aspects of this book but I had a hard time getting into this so like up until the 50% mark like I struggled to listen to this and I almost DNF'd it but I also kind of believe in DNFing at like 50% to like give it a rating and I really wanted to read this for a long time because it looks interesting and I fucking love the cover so I was like Brittany you're gonna do this you're just gonna suck it up and you're gonna try to get to 50% and I did and then I started liking it a little bit more but I mean <sighs> The plot just really could have used some more, like especially at the end and stuff too. Like there's just so many things that it could have used to be like a five star book. Like just the concepts were fucking brilliant, and like I could totally write a good fan fiction about this. But the execution of the plot line and the st there was like no story. I because she kept going off on tangents. Like you're like in this great dialogue, and all of a sudden like, well, this alien on this thing on this planet, and this is what happened five thousand years ago. And that's exactly how he talked and it's so intense and it's like the thickest British accent fucking ever. And I just, it's hard. It's hard. Like it's not part of the dialogue. And whenever there's heavy dialogue and like some funny parts like them talking and they were funny when they were talking, it was really fun and easy to listen to. And especially because I started another audiobook like right after it because I have like so many on waiting and I want to get through that one because it's like 20 hours. Um, I've listened to eight hours of that today and that book has not confused me once. Just gotta say, like not one time was I like, was that what he just said? Like, God, that's weird. Or like, why are we talking about this? Like it has a fucking plot. Of course there's a nicheness to this and I like that part a lot. So honestly, would I still recommend it? I would totally recommend it. I think you have to be in the right headspace and I think you should probably try it via physical book. I would try that first. I really liked a lot of his accents. Like they were, they added to the story a lot, but at the same time, the rest of his voice like took away from the story. So I think I would just recommend trying it in person. And I honestly want to try it. Like I would love to try this in physical. And it's probably one of the only books I've ever thought that I'd like to listen to this on audiobook and then read it. So I that says something and I might reread it and rate it highly, like more highly. I, I don't know. I think it just depends on my mood, but you know, that's how shit goes, right? Hold on, I'm gonna go grab the other book. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a prediction that low key, like this could be a five star book for me. I struggled through the first 50 pages and I know a lot of other people said the same thing when I looked online, that they struggled through the first 50 pages because you really have to get used to like the writing style and you have to get used to being confused because honestly, like you're just gonna be confused because trying to go between these two women and then both playing different sides of this war and then both being in different locations and like the way that they can leave letters for each other is so weird. Like she could stir a letter into a cup of tea and then she could like read it that way or it's just weird. And you know, this book is supposed to be romantic and I'm low key feeling it. Like it's making me feel things. Like when I'm reading it, I get kind of like that heavy longing heart feeling. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I feel kind of crazy because I was expecting to actually kind of hate this and so the first 50 pages I was really intrigued and I liked it but now the more that I'm reading it I'm really starting to love it and enjoy it and I don't want it to end and I'm like kind of putting off reading it right now because I feel like I read it so fast right now and I'm just I want to savor it but I feel like this might be one of my new favorite books and I actually put it already on my Amazon wish list for books I might just buy it for myself I don't know we'll see how like the ending goes because I still have like a hundred pages but I'm halfway through and I don't know how to describe it it's just it's indescribable like the way that these women can communicate via like their letters is just so weird and different and like their lives are so crazy and they can like go through different time periods and they're literally talking through time like one of them's in a cafe in like fucking Italy and like the 1800s or some shit and the other ones like in Greece like thousands of years prior it's just so interesting and I just love this kind of weird shit but it's getting to me more like I am enjoying it more because I have to get used to the writing and it is presumptuous and over the top and flowery and it's basically like a poem written to a book is kind of how I can think of to describe but I'm really falling in love with it ew that's how I feel about this book. Wasn't expecting that. I'm like the most shocked person here. I don't, I don't know. 
So I'll update you and I'll let you know how much I cry. I just want to provide a quick update on this book. Um, listen, so yeah, this is a new five star for me. I don't know why I just fell in love with this book so much, but I do. And it's so weird and I want to reread it immediately, but I have to return it to the library. I mean, I have another month with it, but I also love just getting rid of books. Like I love returning them to the library, like on time or early. So that way they're like off my library list. And then I know like what I have left to work on, if that makes sense. Cause this definitely skipped ahead a lot of the other books on my list right now. Uh, I just, uh, I just fucking love this book. It is so weird and it just hits me the right way. So I know a lot of people didn't like it and I can totally see why. Like I can totally see why so many people gave this like one or two stars because it's just not for them. It is its own little like niche, but I love time travel and it was just so romantic across time. Like the time travel bits even though I guess people could say it was like insta lovey or whatever, but I don't know. I guess like if you're traveling time and you can go anywhere at any time and then you like see that one person across like a field and you just know, you know, I'm a firm believer in that. I can't really say anything else about this. I don't want to spoil it. It's its own experience. You have to experience this book. It's an experience. It's not, there definitely is obviously a, there is definitely a plot in this novel, but it's not like the forefront. It's, it's also like their crazy weird writing and the writing is kind of hard to get into at times. So I can fully understand for that. But I think if you get past the first 50 pages, you'll definitely be surprised or at least, you know, enjoy this book for what it is. I could totally see this being like a new book in like high school. I could totally see this on those lists, like a book list. Like you have to read this when you're in high school and break it down or in college. Like I just feel like it's just one of those books that you could totally dissect. And I feel like every time you read it, you're going to get something else. It's like every time I watch Breaking Bad, I see something different. I love that show. And there's something about that show that just has the same aesthetic quality where like sometimes you're kind of lost or it could be like a little bit slow at times and you're like, what's going on? But then like you see what's happening. So this is definitely a new favorite for me. It's bittersweet and succulent and juicy. And it's not juicy. There's not like sex scenes in here, sadly. But it's so oddly romantic. If you want an overdone Romeo and Juliet for today's age, I feel like this would be it. Here at my library to pick up some more sci-fi books for this beautiful um, readathon of myself. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm allowed to record in there yet, but I'm going to ask and I'll keep you updated. But I'm actually just waiting for my mom to get here. <laughs> there I didn't find anything else that I actually had on my list that I wanted to read for this uh, like sci-fi-ness. I don't know how I'm gonna fit them in because I really wanted to stick to my guns and get the books I wanted but it just was not possible. I'm at my parents house I'm gonna get my nails redone and get some new nails did and I'll talk to you guys later. Okay so true story I for this reading vlog was planning on reading Red Rising. I don't know if I'm gonna read it for this. I don't know. I tried getting into it I haven't been able to get into it yet. I only read like two chapters, but so far it just wasn't pulling me in. So I decided to pick up Vengeful. Technically, 
my library categorizes this as a fantasy, but I think it goes both ways. And I feel like it's more science fiction -y because there's a lot of experiments in this, a lot of scientists and a lot of like government institutions. So I feel like it fits more of the sci-fi genre for me personally. So it's just gonna go on this reading vlog. I'm already 270 pages in. So I started reading this over the weekend when I was dog sitting and I got 150 pages in in one night and that was great. And then so far I've gained another like 120 pages. Not my best work, but I'm having a really hard time reading right now because work is just fucking insane and I'm just really tired and I'm just not making time to read. On my lunches, I'm too tired to read and I need a break so I just watch TV and then I'm not reading at night because I'm so tired and I need to relax and I'm watching ASMR or I'm meditating and I'm not reading at all. So I'm just reading this in small increments, but obviously Vengeful is the second installment in the Vicious series. I don't know what the, the name of this is called. I think it's Super Villains series. Is this a Super Villains series technically? I don't know what the name of it is. But this is the second installment and we have some new perspectives in here that I'm really enjoying so far. And I don't want to spoil it, but it has the same people from the first novel and then it adds in some delicious women. We're just sprinkling them in. Honestly, I'm kind of living for one of them. She might be one of my new favorite characters. Like, I just love her. Mm. Actually, I love both of them. I'm having a hard time picking. But their names are Marcella and June. And I was going to call Marcella Marcella because I watched Under the Tuscan Sun when I was reading this for the first time uh, over the weekend. And one of the guy's names in Under the Tuscan Sun is Marcello. And so I keep going to call her Marcella in my brain when I'm reading it. And I keep doing that. So if I ever call her Marcella, sorry, her name is Marcella. Marcella just sounds more like her. I don't know why. Just go with it. I can't really say too much because it obviously spoil the ending of the first book. And there's just some new perspectives in here and it's very interesting. And there's lots of government stuff and experiments, which are a little hard to listen to. I mean, read like they're like hard to, to read slash come by. Uh, I can't really tell you anything else about this but it's good it's a very easy read for me which is why I think I've read so much of this even though I've barely read any of it I feel like I feel like I haven't like devoted any time to reading it it's just been like lackadaisily reading it when I have like 10 minutes of focus so I'm pretty proud of myself and I hope to finish it this week I was hoping to finish this in like a day or two but I don't know if it's gonna happen but I want to keep to my schedule and it's already like past my schedule and I wanted to read Red Rising in between then but I just couldn't do it. I don't know Red Rising. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I don't know. I thought I was gonna love that book and I think I probably could still but I'm just struggling with it. I think I'm just struggling period and I just have no motivation and since the concept was like kind of big for me I'm just I'm struggling and I have a really bad headache and I just want to get in the shower and I'll wash this day away so <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna go do. We're all blessed because today is Friday. And I think I'm probably gonna finish this tonight. That's my goal, that's what I'm thinking. Don't know. I'm currently on page 420, holla! And it has like 478 pages or something. So I'm hoping I'm gonna finish that tonight. But if I don't, um, I'll probably finish it early tomorrow morning on Saturday and just sit and finish it so I can just fucking finish it. Um, super excited about that because I have just felt, I think I've read this all week. I'm pretty sure it's taken me like, well, like it'll be almost exactly a week. I think that actually took me to read this. So not great for me, but I think I'm just a little burnt out because of how much I read this month and listened to an audiobook too. Like I was burning the candle at both ends. I think that's what happened. I don't know. But it's, it's really good. I don't know if I like this more than the first one. I think they're on pretty even levels for me. It's reading a little bit like an action film and I'm not always the biggest fan of action films. I mean, it just depends. I feel like, what's that? I think it was like Batman Begins or whatever. Great film. But I don't know if I'd wanna read about it all the time. I don't know, it's just not usually my thing, so. It's feeling a little X-Men-y too. Like it feels a little bit like X-Men mixed with like Batman. Do I hate it? No, I'm enjoying it. Would I give this one five stars? I, I don't know, like I've enjoyed it the whole way, but 
it's just not hitting me like it did with the first one for some reason. Maybe it's because it was totally new to me as a concept and it was just really interesting how they died and every time, the way you die, like have a near death experience and come back from it, that's what your power is. So like, um, I'm gonna like go on a limb here and say like, if you were like, God, I wish I wasn't so cold like while you were dying, I'm sure like your superpower would be being hot all the time, like a fire or something. I have no idea. So it's really interesting how this world works. And this one is a little more like crime thrillery too because they're trying to, like we're working like with the cops to try to find people. Interesting. Also, I understand that I am indeed wearing a sweater and it is 102 degrees outside in California today. However, it is not 102 degrees inside. I feel like sometimes the hotter it is outside, the colder it is in here because our air conditioning is working extra hard to make it cold in here. And then I feel like it's just blowing constantly on me all day because my vent's like right there. And then I just get so cold, like my hands are cold typing at work and then it's just not good. So I just put on a light sweater. So you might hear an update from me again tonight. I'm not sure. I'm hoping I'll give you an update tonight and I'll just finish reading this because I only have like 20 to 80, like 60 pages. So we'll see how that goes. <music> Thank you.